PANOSCAN, high-resolution imaging that helps NASA and the Air Force train and prepare for emergencies. PANOSCAN 360-degree imaging helps law enforcement agencies with interactive maps and tactical planning to protect our schools. PANOSCAN, the choice for ultra-high-resolution panoramic imaging for Homeland Security, SWAT response, emergency preparedness, and crime scene documentation. For over 30 years, Teleku has built its reputation in the community on a foundation of service, empowerment, advancement, and the creation of self-sufficiency, achieving multifaceted growth through innovation and collaboration. And we really believe that the greatest social good that you do for an individual is the creation of a full-time job so that uh, he or she may clothe, feed, and educate their own families. Teleku, a pioneering institution for the ages. Tony Pana has spent the last 20 years as one of Hollywood's most dynamic film and TV talents. As well as being an artist and education activist, today he stars as Robert Santiago on Showtime's breakthrough dramatic series, Resurrection Boulevard. Take a look at this. About what? About the fact that everything in this family has always been about one thing, about what you wanted, about boxing. What I wanted. I didn't get to choose. I never had the opportunities these kids have now to get an education, to work in a fancy Beverly Hills law office. No, I did what I had to, to survive. And now Alex has the chance to get an education and become a doctor and have his own office in Beverly Hills. And what do you do? What, what did I do? Alex made his own decision oh, to quit, this. his own choice. He didn't make that choice. Can't you see that? He's doing it for you. He's giving up his dream so he can give you yours, this dream of becoming a world champion boxer. Like, that's so special. Being a world champion is special. Being a doctor is special, too, except you get to use your brains instead of getting them beat out of you. Listen, boxing kept me and your sister and this whole family from having to eat dirt. I don't apologize for my dream. I don't apologize for anything. What about Teresa? Did you ever stop to think about what her dream was? Kids. Nice house. Food on the table. Clothes she wasn't ashamed to wear. And boxing gave her all that. Tony Plano not only heads the Resurrection Boulevard cast, he also heads the East Los Angeles Classic Theater and Beyond Borders a dramatic arts program promoting literacy for at-risk youth, and they've, he's done that for the last five years. I'm Chris Franco, and next up, I'll be taking a look at how Cuban-born actor Tony Plana is evolving into one of L.A.'s most impactful artists on the next Cafe California's L.A. Legend. Good morning, you've tuned in to Cafe California, LA Legends. I'm your legendary host, Chris Franco. Y soy muy Franco. I'm going to spend the next half hour speaking with my friend, Tony Plana. And Tony, you, after you saw the clip there, you went, wow. You know, it's an intense show, isn't it, Resurrection Boulevard? It's more than that. It's, yeah. it's um, a dream come true for me. Really? Yeah, I mean, uh, ever since I got into this business 22 years ago, I've been, uh, you know, along with many others, dreaming of a Latino show on the air, yeah, you know, it's that dealt with family, that dealt with us, mm -hmm. in uh, in multidimensional ways, yeah. uh, m other than stereotypes and one-dimensional functionary supporters of a plot mm -hmm. that re didn't really belong to us, you know. It's been a long time coming, and the thing that's so amazing about the show is that it's an entire collaborative of Latino artists for the first time on screen and back, uh, behind the scenes. During our conversation here, we're going to run some pictures of uh, other shows that Tony's been on, other movies. Uh, you were in uh, JFK, Lone Star, The Burning Season, Nixon, uh, An Officer and a Gentleman, The Three Amigos. Um, but I want to know, um, 
How do you think this all Latino production that they put together at Showtime, how has that impacted the creativity of the show? Does it make a difference? Tremendous. Tremendous. I've never been in a show that's more collaborative, that's more inclusive. Dennis Leone, who's the creator, has yeah. created that atmosphere. You told me that something happened with your Salvad uh, Salvadorian nanny that actually contributed to the creation of the show. Yeah, well, every, you know, every week we, we sit down as a cast and we read the script that's coming the next week. Mm -hmm. And we, um, we, you know, we give our input. And uh, there was one storyline of this, uh, my first romantic relationship mm -hmm. since the death of my wife which is like a year or so later, and uh, it's with a bakery girl, and in um, una panaderia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we were trying to figure out the, the gradations, the, the levels of this relationship and how it would progress. Mm -hmm. And you know, we just got to the point where um, we're in the middle of it, and it was kind of static. I said, we're not moving anywhere. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. I said, we needed to move to a, a deeper level of intimacy. And uh, they said, well, how do we do that? I said, well, why don't we talk about our kids? Because she has a, she's a single mother, and um, you know, I've got five children, and somehow that's a common ground that's other than just romantic mm -hmm. you know, and sexual. And, and so you know, they said, well, what do we talk about? I said, well, you know, I'm ha in that episode, I was having trouble with my oldest son, and I, and I thought of my son Alex and how apprehensive I was as a, as a first-time parent, mm -hmm. and how I would get up in the middle of the night whenever he had a cold or something and just freak out and think that he wasn't going to breathe anymore. <laughs> you know, is, is he breathing? You know? Oh, and, uh, well, and then, and then my, my, our nanny from Salvador, who was helping us with the, with the child care, she looked at me and she goes, um, es que es el primero. This is the first one. I said, what do you mean? Es que con el primero hay, un, hay una pena. Siempre hay una pena. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I, was, I was so touched by that. And um, I told that to the writers and they incorporated it in the show. And, it, and it's a beautiful walk and talk scene with me and this girl coming out of the bakery, just t I'm taking, walking her home, and I just share this deep thing about my, my oldest son. That's what is so amazing about the show. It is so truthful. And it's so culturally, culturally specific. Yeah. And that's what makes it beautiful. I mean, we, you know, no other show has this perspective or this sensibility mm -hmm. ever. I mean. Um, I, what we were saying, I love the fact that it's kind of presumptuous insofar as it presumes that Latinos are here, they're part of the LA scene, they're functioning, they're part of the history. They are a family and... Well, you know, it's so refreshing that we're not like new immigrants. Mm -hmm. I mean, you and I both know, both being actors in this business, how, you know, the immigrant story, however important it is, however prevalent it is, it keeps being repeated and repeated and repeated. Mm -hmm. And it goes to the crux of resurrection and that it starts to undermine the various stereotypes that are being promoted and prolonged in our business because I think Latinos continue to be seen as marginal Correct. because they're immigrants, because they're uneducated, because they're, they have their language handicapped. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. I mean, there's a, a highly significant percentage of, who, you know, of Latinos in this country who have been here over many generations. Correct. And we're not perceived as that. And I, I'm, I'm hoping that resurrection begins to change that perception. Yeah, well, you have all sorts of different Latinos, a different strata. Uh, Ruth Livier pays, plays your daughter, and she's involved uh, with the lawyer. In, involved with the lawyer. Nelson, my son wants to be a doctor. Exactly, which you know? is which is great. And as I said, it's just my sister-in-law is a is a uh, 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 beautician. She she runs a beauty shop, so she's a small business owner. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all there, you know. And and then as we become more successful in the fight game, we become part of you know an, a successful middle class. Mm -hmm. You see me wearing the glass suits and things. You know, it's like. You know, these guys have the see, American man. dream. They, they, they have the American dream, and they want to they achieve it. 